Have you wondered about living elsewhere in your retirement? Well, we have almost daily. No, it's not a simple decision, especially when two people are involved. Hi, this is Gil and Jean of Retire There, a podcast about retirement destinations. We live in Brooklyn, New York, having grown up and worked in this area of the country. We're hoping to relocate when we're both retired. For us, it's the weather, the chaos, the noise, and the yearning to be near nature and not within three feet of human beings. <laughs> That's right. In February 2020, we embarked on our journey to find that special place. We spent a week in Winter Park, Florida, which is beautiful, but something said it wasn't for us. As we were planning for the next trip, the pandemic arrived. Jean then gave birth. I gave birth? <laughs> to this podcast. With so many baby boomers retiring, many must be relocating. Why not connect with and learn from them? Here's a little background about us. I'm Asian, born in Brazil, and grew up in Flatbush, Brooklyn. I'm an engineer turned attorney turned podcaster. I recently retired from a university career practicing higher education law. I love the academic environment, but it was time to do something else. I no longer have to set an alarm, drive in BQE traffic, or work with people who don't always share the same principles. Oh, did I just say that? <laughs> you bet I did. I traded all that in to binge crime dramas into the wee hours just a little bit to develop the podcast, to volunteer, practice metal smithing, tackle our possessions. No regrets so far, Jane. I'm not Asian. And as Gil mentioned, I'm not retired. I'm just plain tired. Oh. Born and raised in Long Island, New York, a place I always wanted to leave. I'm a law librarian working in a court who loves his job, but we'll retire by the time we select our ideal location. We will be speaking to folks from across the street to across the globe who have moved to their dream venues and more. So please stay tuned. And remember, if you know anyone who has moved anywhere for retirement, let us know. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. We will be chatting today with Deborah Tobin a global storytelling multimedia journalist about Chiang Mai, Thailand. This is our third Thailand episode, Gene, wow. following Bangkok and Phuket. Now, pre-COVID, over 10 million visited the region annually. Isn't it strange we now speak in terms of pre- and post-COVID? What an error. With the population of 127,000 reported in 2019, Chiang Mai is a city located in the heart of mountainous northern Thailand. Founded in 1296, it was the capital of the independent Lana Kingdom until 1558. Its old city, known as the Walled City area, still retains vestiges of walls and moats from its history as a cultural and religious center. Chiang Mai is the largest city in northern Thailand and the third largest city in the nation after metropolitan Bangkok and Nakhon Rat Ratchasima. I hope I said that right. Uh, it is located on the Ping River, a major tributary of the Chao Haira River at an elevation of 1,100 feet, also 335 meters. It serves as the religious, economic, cultural, educational, and transportation center for both northern Thailand and part of neighboring Myanmar, formerly known as Burma. According to the YouTubers Samuel and Audrey of their travel and food videos, Chiang Mai is a growing city with laid-back vibes, a foodie scene that will make you drool, and temples sprinkled around every corner. I've looked at photographs of many of the temples, and they're spectacular. Gil is a part-time jeweler who loves to work with silver. So the temple that struck her is the Wat Shri Sufin, better known as the Silver Temple. It is a lesser-known temple as it is outside the walled city. This incredibly ornate temple is located in the city's silversmith district. So the walls are covered in silver, nickel, and aluminum panels created by local craftsmen. I would love to see this temple, but there's a problem. Women are not allowed inside due to the belief that they would deteriorate the holy relics. Okay, sorry. How ridiculous is that? I know I'm not in Thailand, so <laughs> I'm saying this, but my apologies to the monarchy. But guess who declared that rule? It must have been a man. Why would a woman ruin anything inside a temple? Did it not give birth to the person who declared that rule? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Buddhist temples, Chiang Mai has 117, folks. Again, 117. 
And on that note, a little background about our guest. Deborah was born and raised on the Canadian East Coast. She attended the University of Nova Scotia. She's a teacher, school leader, and has worked in Canada, China, Malaysia, Oman, Angola, Malawi, and the Sudan. She went back to school a few years ago to study multimedia journalism and is now a freelance journalist. She very recently finished her last school job. Her interests and hobbies include reading, hiking, swimming, video, audio production. Boy, do we need you. (laughs) And writing. And she has a wonderful YouTube channel called Mobile Dispatches. That's Mobile Dispatches. And we will include all this in the show notes. So welcome to Retire There, Deborah. We are so fortunate to have you join us. We love journalists as you'll make our jobs easier today. And because you know what people want to know or are interested in. Now, I've been viewing and admiring your work from afar about your amazing journey to Thailand and all things Thai. In fact, I think I found you on Twitter and I was so excited to read and follow your account. We will include all this information again, as I mentioned, in the show notes for our audience, as well as your articles on a site called 60andme.com, which I also follow on Twitter. So without further ado, Deborah, Chiang Mai sounds wonderful, but I'm sure there are the pros and cons, as we will hear. Please tell us what led you there. It was a bit of a journey, for sure. I left Canada in my early 50s to work abroad as sort of a kind of post-retirement at that point. And I'd always thought when I lived in Canada, I always thought I'd end up retiring in Mexico. That was kind of my my goal. And then I started working in Asia. And I worked in, when I was working in China, I spent holidays in Malaysia. Uh, then I ended up working in Malaysia. I've always loved Thailand. I came here, uh, even when I was living in Canada, I would come to Thailand fairly frequently. So yeah, Thailand was kept kind of coming up as I thought about Bali. I thought about a few other places. Working in the international school world, I was kind of able to access people who had lived in so many different countries and uh, who were also looking at, who were researching retirement. So I just love Thailand. Um, I love everything about it. The people, the culture, the history, the food, of course. And I have to say, when you talked about the Silver Temple in Chiang Mai, that that's the only temple I've ever seen that doesn't allow women inside. Mm, we will it's not. That. It's yeah. not an. It's not a normal thing. I don't know particularly why that temple, but yeah, I've never seen that in another one. It's mm. like such an old rule that. Right. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Move along. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Chiang Mai, in particular in Thailand, uh, held a lot of, of appeal for me uh, because of its location. It's um, it's surrounded by mountains. It's it's just stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. And although it's got a tourist industry, definitely on the backpacker trail, Chinese uh, incoming, you know, large Chinese groups come in uh, or have done before pandemic. The tourism is kind of kept to a particular part of the old wall city. So you don't necessarily see it spilling out all over. It's not all over the place. Rather than choosing a southern part of Thailand um, near the beaches where tourism is just in your face all day, every bit of the area, if there's a beach, it's going to be saturated with that feeling of being uh, of being surrounded by tourists all the time. I feel that life in Chiang Mai, um, there's the opportunity for a more type of life in Chiang Mai. Um, I can go places where the tourists go, but on a day-to-day basis, I have uh, I live in a Thai neighborhood and there are other expats here, but um, you don't have that feeling that you're sort of watching people uh, live out their holidays all day. <laughs> okay. All right. So I, the audience can't see this, but your place is stunning. From, it's beautiful. Yeah. The little we're Thank able you. to glimpse. And I love the, <laughs> the, the tones and the colors. So we, we understand that you bought a condo and you renovated it. Can you, can you tell us how that process um, occur? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, it was um, a lot easier than I expected. Um, when I first moved here in, uh, I was in Malaysia and then I moved here in July, or, yeah, July, 2017, my first attempt at retirement, I 
been back to work since. <laughs> I really hadn't had any plans of buying. I had two houses in Canada that I was so happy to get rid of wow. that <laughs> I really wasn't, I, I didn't think I wanted to kind of saddle myself with owning something again. Mm-hmm. Then I was only here for a few months and I thought, yeah, you know what? I'm going to because the advantages for me, I knew I was going to be living abroad for parts of the year. So continuing with short term uh, school contracts or, you know, whatever traveling. So, yeah, I, I met up with a guy who's uh, a British guy who sells property here and rents property. I had rented uh, a condo from him first. And we started looking around and it just made sense to me. I had been kind of on the road for a number of years, contract to contract and moving around to a lot of different countries. And I really liked the idea of not putting stuff in storage when I moved out of really kind of settling in a place. And (laughs) and, people do that uh, all over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So they got tired of that, gets old. Then I thought of the other potential advantages of owning. um, And one of them is home, home exchanges. So I foresee, I mean, this was pre-pandemic, but getting back to normal lifestyle, which I foresee coming up, I will list this place. uh, And Chiang Mai is a really popular location to do home exchanges in other places. So when I'm away, I don't rent it out. Um, Honestly, I want to come in and there it is, no Mm -hmm. matter what happens. And that has served me well when the pandemic, I was in Africa when the pandemic shut us down the first time in March, 2020. Um, And then recently in December, I was in Sudan and there was a military coup. On both occasions, I kind of had to leave. I know, I know. I think the universe is telling me something. Man, I got to tell you, you are are daring and brave. Good for you. Good for you. From from plague to uh, to coup. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah, but she's she's seeing exciting. Exciting places, though. Wow. <laughs> yeah, really. You are, though. You yeah, are. Yeah, that's that's one way. Of, I guess that's one way of looking at it. <laughs> so, in both in both cases, that has served me well to be able to just get on a plane and you know, and here I am home. Mm-hmm. I dealt with it. This guy was great that I dealt with. He just sent me out to look at a, a lot of different places, and he had um, his mother, you know, had bought uh, some property here, and so I had a really good. Yeah, really good, really good help, I guess, in the beginning. And then his uh, one of his Thai staff knew a designer, and that's how I met the guy who ended up doing my place. But I bought it's just a studio; it's not huge, certainly big enough. It's got a beautiful balcony. It's on a, it's a corner uh, unit, so it's got a really nice big balcony overlooking the mountains and the city. It sparkles oh, wow. at night. It's really oh, beautiful. Yeah, and. Yeah, so it's it's like I say, it's not huge, but uh, it had to be completely gutted. It had been owned mm. um, by a Chinese woman, and there's a rule in these condos in Thailand that I think it's about f- forty nine or fifty around there percent has to be owned uh, by Thai people. So oh. foreign ownership within a condo building is um, restricted. So oh. if you if uh, you have to wait until a foreigner is selling oh, wow. before you can buy from them and you cannot buy land um, or you cannot buy, uh, you know, a house because unless you have a Thai partner, you know, to have an agent who's aware of when when foreign condos are coming up for sale, he could show me the places that were that I was eligible to buy. So I just really liked the building that I'm in. It's an it's an older building, but it's really well maintained. It's it's uh, it's a beautiful building. I think it's 19 stories high. Okay. One of the few. There aren't a lot of uh, high rises in, okay. and it's right on the river. It's beautiful. Nice. So what floor are you on? Floor. What's floor? I'm on the 18th. Oh, wow. and you know you know I I grew to love high rises. I lived in China, and uh-huh. I've never really considered it. I was living in houses before, and then my staff housing in China was on the 22nd floor, just love that kind of panoramic view. Uh, you get the you sort of the hum of the city, the noise, but you don't really, you know, it, it's not really a disturbing noise. Yeah, it's lovely. So the place was horrible. It had, you know, uh, as far as the decor goes, it had terrible wood paneling. And uh, I don't know where in God's name the bathroom fixtures came from, but I've never seen anything <laughs> quite like it. So... Was, we took before and after pictures and I love the it. shower looked like yeah. some kind of pink spaceship. I, I, oh. I honestly don't know what it was. Mm-hmm. So 70s, you know, I yeah. was uh, in a rental at the time and I bought it. I wasn't entirely 100% sure, clear what I was going to do. 
I, in the beginning, I even thought about renting it out and staying put in my rental. But then I got a job offer for a short term position in Oman. So I said, yeah, you know what, I'm going to go do that. And I'm just going to let this guy renovate this place. Oh, it's kind oh. Of I know, I know. You weren't there. So, <laughs> wow. I wasn't there. A leap of faith. I've been in Thailand for, you know, six months or something by then. So. And he was, was recommended? Totally, he was highly recommended? He was recommended by, by, I was totally okay. relaxed about everything. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. I, think you, I think you have to be, it's about being relaxed. So, but I did spend a lot of time with him before I left. He did all the drawings and he did all the planning and he had computer models of what everything would look like. He asked me, you know, the guy didn't speak a lot of English, but he was so effective at communicating. What was my lifestyle like? You know, um, Thai people in general don't cook a lot. Go counterintuitive oh. when you know about I had no Thai clue. Food. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Good to know. So in, in, in Asia in general, this is the truth. They mm. eat out. That's, you know, hence this big street food thing is not about tourists. That's how people live. So you go to a lot of apartments if they're uh, decorated or uh, renovated by Thais and there will be very minimal cooking facilities. Oftentimes mm. a one unit, uh, one thing, hot plate or rice cooker, microwave, microwave small fridge like that. I cook a lot. So he had to design uh, in this small space, you know, uh, enough for a kitchen. He built in lots of storage space. Some of the storage space that was here, you know, they redid and painted and new, new fixtures and, and whatever, but just a freaking amazing job. I'm in Oman and every day he's sending me photographs and even to the point where there's some guy in this little workshop that looks like it's in the middle of the jungle and he's building my cabinets. Wow. And he's sending, he's sending oh. me these little videos of this. And I'm like, well, okay. Oh and, I, God, you know, I'm in so Oman great. and it's like a total, I'm in a t- totally different place. And, oh, wow. Um, but he sort of brought that to me every day. Yeah. Everything was custom made. All the, all the cabinets, all the, everything was done, was custom made. He started this in December and I came back from Oman for a week in March and it was finished. It was actually finished was before fast. then, but I wasn't here. That was fast. Yeah. yeah not yeah. bad. So yeah. can, yeah. can you give us um, the the cost of the units that you were being shown? Like what kind of ranges are we talking about? Oh, oh, wait, before we go, as of today, January 22, 2022, the U.S. dollar is equivalent to 33 Thai baht and the euro is equal to 37 Thai baht, just for reference. So, uh, okay, so what, what do the condos go for? So I was... You know, um, studio, what have you? Translating things into, yeah, I was translating things into US dollars, mm-hmm. you know, because I figured most of your audience would, would, would get back. Thank I you. think in Canadian dollars. I think in Canadian dollars, but. Oh, well, that's <laughs> so, good. I, mean, I was going to look up yeah. Canadian. Yeah. 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 No, no. It's, I, I, yeah. It's close to the so, US dollar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my agent, uh, I interviewed him for a video that I made and really looking at what people can expect. And I made a video about particularly about buying a condo here. Yeah, so, I saw that. I saw that. That was great. Yeah. yeah. Mine was around 50,000. That um, was, you know, sort of pre, wow. pre-renovation. The renovation itself was another 15 or so. Did you say 15? Um, one five? That's yeah, it? One five. Oh my. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, keep in mind, it is a small space, but sure, sure. Yeah. keep in mind that but you know, everything's everything, tailored. Yeah. everything came, was, was torn out and a hundred percent, you know, everything done new. That included labor and the materials. Everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, everything. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so the whole thing yeah. came in close to 65 or under 70. We, we could yeah. Say. Oh, for sure. Well under 70. Wow. And that's, you know, and then furnishing it was, was also, you know. Yeah very, very inexpensive. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, here you can furnish using traditional tie or you can get shipped uh, from uh, Ikea in Bangkok. You know, there's, mm-hmm. there's, uh, you know, choices either way, mm-hmm. but prices really depend on, you know, one of the things that he said when I interviewed him was if you look at, there are new buildings that are popping up or there certainly were before the pandemic. Um, a lot of people invest in real estate in Thailand you know, uh, Chinese, for instance, there's there's a, a a large presence of Chinese ownership in uh, Thai condos. Never necessarily going to be living in them, but they rent them or they just sit there as a, as an investment. So there's lots of lots of empty lots oh, of parts of the world really? where there's lots of tons of Canada. There's huh. tons in Vancouver where yeah. Chinese uh, Hong Kong investors have just 
left places vacant. It's driven up property prices and causes problems. That's terrible. <laughs> I mean, no, I know. I was just thinking. I, I'm just getting. Off, I was just I, thinking. We're gonna go. <laughs> I'm getting. I'm getting off topic here. Okay. Price depends on, uh, you know, new or old. Uh, if you want to, you know, come into an older building like I did, you can put a bit of money into renovating. And, you know, to look for a building that's already well maintained because you can't control that, but you can control the decor and you can control, you know, what the place looks like. Mm -hmm. So it really, it, there's going to be a wide variety of costs that's at the lowest end. And then it just gradually, you know, mm -hmm. but I was looking at some rental prices today because just before I talked to you, just because I think as well mm -hmm. that people thinking about retirement here are not necessarily going to want to buy. Right. And they may want to rent for a while first, yeah. mm -hmm. and which totally makes sense because yep. you don't know if that's the place you want to be. Renting is a great way to try things on, right? Sure, sure. So in my building, I saw, I looked at some listings online today with a um, company that I like. I saw a really nice studio, looked like it was, I know the building, so it looked like it was renovated for US $240 a month. I saw a one bedroom in a more high, higher end kind of newer building mm -hmm. for 550. Oh. And I saw a two bedroom for 520. In all cases, they, those were newly renovated apartments with always with a nice pool. Uh, oh. So a nice big outdoor pool for the building. Mm -hmm. And you can, in the newer buildings, you can usually count on a gym. Those things are pretty standard in a lot of these, in a lot of these condo buildings. So how much you spend, you can get a condo here for $50,000. You can spend as much as you want after that, obviously. Sure. It's like mm -hmm. it's it's like anywhere else, right? Mm -hmm. But certainly the prices are just nowhere near what mm -hmm. they are in Western. That's great. Western oh, yeah, countries. absolutely. And, yeah, and Chiang Mai sounds beautiful. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I'm at this stage of my life where I'm kind of finding or looking for my purpose. <laughs> and every every time I see something, well, my mom would cite Buddhism principles to us, even though she wasn't really. But um, growing up, she would say things and, and we picked up a lot of it. And, and I, there's just something about the principles and the beliefs. I, you know, I'm not a convert, but, but I, I think I am close to a lot of the Buddhism principles. So when I, when I was doing the research for our show, I was amazed by the amount of, um, by the amount of temples, just the overall feel. But, but, you know, again, that's not for everyone. And, and I get that. You know, it's, I'm not religious by any means, but mm -hmm. I, I totally get what you're saying. And yeah. it is actually part of the fabric of life. You know, it's part here. It's how uh, they treat other people. Mm -hmm. It's how they treat stray animals, which in my mind is this major judge of a of a society that, you know, I call them the citizen dogs. <laughs> they, you know, they just sort of roam it. around yeah, and yeah. Yeah. people, people feed them, people look out for them. Yeah. You know, it's, there's always in front of little shops, little dishes of food and water uh, in front of the temples. There's, there's so many stray animals that live in the temples. So I love that sensibility. Yeah. You know how it, I don't know how they operate as a religious, you know, mm -hmm, society. Mm -hmm. That's not part of my world. Sure. But sure, I sure. do know how they operate as human beings. That's, you know, if I may interrupt, I, I'm so yeah. glad you brought up the treatment of animals or, or the respect because again, you know, you're going back to, there's so many stereotypes, but a, a friend of ours had posted something on Facebook and he thought it was funny or he reposted someone else's post about cat. Have you had cat soup or, or, or something? Uh -huh. And, and he, and he posted it. And then a bunch of his friends were like, Oh, you know, laughing. And of course I was, I was beyond offended. Not, not because I'm Asian, but just, I know where that came from. You know, but who knows what people, who knows what people eat and you know what, who cares? It's, no, but to hear that there, there's a, there's a, you know, bowl of water or milk by, no, by the no, temple. I understand what you're you know, saying. I, yeah. I'm trying to separate the two things because mm -hmm. you often hear this whole thing about eating cats and dogs. It's yeah. like, 
what what is this? What is what, why do people focus on this? I, I don't I don't quite understand this. Right, right. It's right. like it's the worst insult to a Western person to <laughs> yeah. say we we you know we eat your pets. They, right. they eat your pets. They, right. They right. They'll eat a cow horrible. and a pig. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. They must yeah. be terrible, yeah. terrible yeah. people. I remember my little brother had a pig for a pet. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So it's 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 that otherness, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It is that. How do we fi- define them as other? They're yes. different from us. They Excellent. are yep. less yep. than us because they eat our pets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. You know, I, right. lived, I, right. I lived in China for two years. I mm-hmm. lived in Chongqing mm-hmm. in China. I had, as a Westerner, I had a hard time going into the meat part of the supermarket hmm. because, you know, and later this would kind of more, this idea more developed in my mind as I, I, I watched going through the checkout, most of what people had was vegetables. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. there was a small amount of meat. Mm-hmm. And that's the way Thai people eat as well. Yeah. But yeah. in China, you really saw that sort of uh, something that's becoming a bit trendy in Western societies now is that idea of nose to tail eating of meat, that every part oh, of it's... the animal mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is used, which, you know, kind of grosses us out when we see <laughs> the pig snouts and uh, hot pot in, Cheng- in uh, Chongqing was, um, there was always these chicken Claws kind of floating to the surface, mm-hmm. which, but it's a delicacy, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's 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 not waste. You know, mm-hmm. they're yeah. they're if they're yeah. going to kill an animal, right. and they are using all of the animal. Mm-hmm. So you know, our Western sensibilities get stepped on. Mm-hmm. I I can speak for this myself, but I've never seen anything in all my travels in China or Southeast Asia that made me feel like my puppy dog was getting eaten you know it's, it's, it's i've never seen anything like that mm-hmm, i've never even mm-hmm. heard of anybody seeing anything right like right right i'm not saying that someone doesn't eat a dog i, I don't know yeah, that. yeah 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 no, but, no no but the but, general right but the, it's it's that's just another way of demonizing the mm-hmm. other yeah right. um in my exactly. opinion when i see exactly. this stuff like i get people ask me this if i post a video on a facebook book group and someone will will write and say oh but i hear they eat dogs like i don't even want to answer <laughs> it's just not even I, worth just avoid it. i know in, in, in new york city for years there's been an urban myth and so many people have said this to me and i always have to set them straight that chinese restaurants cook dogs and yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like you said, it's it's way of separating people. So we shouldn't even bother answering, but I do answer. Right, right, right. Like because because I know it's not true. Right. I mean, what, but, but why? But, why would they do that? You know, yeah. it's so stupid. Yeah. As, uh, you know, someone's mm-hmm. delivering pork and chicken yeah. and yeah. whatever to their doorstep <laughs> at the restaurant in New York. But no, but, but my phone call. So I want I want fifty pounds of dog. We're going to get that. <laughs> You know, and that stuff leads to the stuff about blaming Chinese for COVID or whatever. It's all it's all part of the same mindset. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But so let me ask you: Is one of the main reasons you move to Thailand the people? You always feel how warm they are. Do you find that are they welcoming? Yeah, for sure. But you know what? Again, we're not going to put all Thai people in the same basket. Sure, sure. You know, they're different from they're different mm-hmm. from region to region, right? So when I'm in Thailand, uh, when I'm in Bangkok, rather, people there are very different from Chiang Mai or down south in Phuket. They're different mm-hmm. again. Chiang Mai, I think, is really particularly known for the warmth. It's very true. And they, you know, for for retirees, a certain mm-hmm. another benefit of Thailand in general and definitely Chiang Mai, is a reverence of older people. Nice. Okay. This, I run into that daily. Someone kind of, I always feel that someone's looking out for me. I'm not crippled. I'm not Mm -hmm, infirm mm -hmm. in any way. But there's still that, that, that kindness, that extra kindness, little bits and pieces of extra kindness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's lovely. The kids are sweet, friendly, you know, yeah. In general, People go the extra mile for you. They're much nicer about speaking English than we are about trying to speak Thai. Uh, yeah. And this is not about tourism. It's about, you know, daily life during the pandemic has been really interesting here with, you know, with tourism not here, what's it like? They're yeah. very accepting when they're not seeing you in any country. Tourists are seen as an opportunity, right? But when you're living in a place where there's no tourism, suddenly the relationships become clearer. Interesting. And so nice. You know, this woman, yeah. I went for a massage yesterday, which is, oh, there's a whole other story, Thai massage. And I had a, a bit of a sore foot. And she held out of her purse this 
uh, jar of ointment. Mm-hmm. And she said, this, you know, this, this, this is great stuff. This will fix it. She rubbed that on my foot and it was just lovely. You know, just the, her, that moment where she reaches into her own purse to find something that's hers that she mm-hmm. knows for. Yeah. That's sweet. That really is yeah. nice. You know? Lovely. Because yeah. she didn't have to do that. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. It's, it's mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I always get, I always get this sort of meeting of the eyes, especially now that we have the masks with other older people, ah. um, mm. Thai neighbors and, you know, people who run the hardware store order. They all, older ladies always sort of acknowledge me. And I, I guess the longer I live here, the more I see those subtle things, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they acknowledge that I'm, that I'm, that we're in the same kind of age space and yeah. Yeah, there's that kind of connection that's lovely. I love that. And I love the um, reverence of older people in general. You know, it's very different Mm. from the Western culture all the way to your kid could be 20 and he's living at home. You know, in Asian (laughs) culture, you live at home until you marry, you know, in general. But um, it's not like your once your kid turns 18 then you treat them like a guest and you expect them to you know and you kick them out so none of that exists as far as i know about about the chinese let's go back to something fun i assume you uh had installed a full fridge did install a full fridge <laughs> cuz you said you <laughs> cuz you said you I enjoyed did. cooking so all right so yeah, my question and, and is I made, and i made him build a cabinet around it so that oh, it, uh, that okay. see that yeah, I would not have fit. Although I've seen apartments with bigger fridges, but they're kind of like out in the middle of the room somewhere. Not, <laughs> but he's he's got this tucked into. He's got okay. this tucked into. Uh, yeah. Okay. So where do you go grocery shopping, food shopping, and so forth? Do you need a car? Tell us about that. That's yeah. That's a good, really good question. So I will not have a car. I, honestly, I, there's no way I'm going to drive here. Okay. Um, and why is that? Because the roads are crazy or, or what? You know, I was always a nervous driver. Even when I was in Canada, I learned to drive late in life. It is crazy. You know, who knows what the rules are? I don't know. You know, there, there are no lights or there's, you know, and I have no interest <laughs> in it. I just see, I don't see any point okay. for me personally. Well, everything's so, accessible, right? I mean, by foot. But it, it is Everything I need is accessible by foot. I can go anywhere because, you know, you guys have Uber in the U.S. We have a similar, I think it's actually even owned by Uber, Uber a similar similar drive sharing app called Grab. Okay. And so for, you know, $2, I can go anywhere in Chiang Mai. Oh. And they are at my door within 10 minutes. They're always available. Mm -hmm. There are, if you want something a little more fun and uh, whatever, there's the tuk-tuks, which are great. And they can take you, take you anywhere and you can really enjoy the wind in your face and the views along the way. Um, Tell our audience what that is, because I saw a photo of it. It, uh, uh, What is it called? The tuk truck? Tuk tuk, and yeah. it's uh, so tuk tuk is like um, they exist in countries in Africa, Asia, India. They're like little like little buses, China. right? Little China, no, Chinese. No. It's a little, it's a little, little uh, pagoda type thing on three wheels, okay, motorized. Okay. It's almost like you stuck this thing on a motorcycle or something, you know. Except okay. they're wheels. They're you know they decorate them beautifully, and they're uh, they're really fun. You can uh, they're probably yeah wouldn't consider it safe. You don't wear a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> you're out in the middle of traffic you're quite exposed uh-huh, but uh-huh. it's it's a very cool way to see see the scenery and see and to kind of immerse yourself in the street life more because you're you're at street level and you're you're outside mm-hmm. but the grocery shopping is an interesting topic because like you I don't want to cook all the time because I lived in countries where I had to cook all the time so here in Chiang Mai because there's a good healthy size expat population you can get whatever you need if you want uh any kind of western groceries the markets are endless when it's you know the beautiful beautiful cupboard markets outdoor markets mm-hmm. i live uh, across the street from non Ho- non market which is an which is an old thai market that is just endless and it's beautiful and oh, it's nice. full of everything you could want and fruits and mm-hmm. vegetables and prepared foods and you name it, it's there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then there's a number of chains of Western, one called Rimping, which is a Western, more Western style grocery store. You can, I mean, if there's some sauce or something from home that you feel like you can't live without or cereal or whatever, uh, you can get it there. It's going to cost you more, but it's, if you just want to live on buying ingredients that uh, Thai people use, 
massively less expensive, but I, I kind of mix up those two things. So right, right. I get the things that are that I want or need. And you know what? Over the years, that's become less and less of the Western things that I thought I couldn't live without. And then go to the markets for just for the experience and for picking out vegetables or whatever meat, fish, seafood, all that stuff is available mm -hmm. at the markets. You have to, if you love doing it and you want to get around Chiang Mai and really see the what the city, how the city operates. You know, there's a there's a market here that caters to restaurants on a Saturday morning or really early. It's just visually stunning. It's just tuk tuk and motor people will load it down motorcycles <laughs> full of bags of uh, greens wow. and carrots and huge trucks coming in from the countryside. Mm -hmm. with the whole family on board and sitting on top of the cabbages and uh, a, a really lovely experience. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if I don't want to cook, I just walk out of my building, go right or go left. It doesn't matter. And mm -hmm. there's a huge array of Indian, Thai food, you know, any combination. There's a big Chinese population mm -hmm. in Thailand. So there's that that influence as well. And in Northern Thailand, influences from Laos or Myanmar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's Thai food in the North is very different from Thai food in the South. The options for food here are mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just, and I've never lived anywhere else that I felt had the options that I have here. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow. And, you know, there's always expats in Thailand that have opened a British pub or a, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, you can, if you want that, you want a really good roast dinner, on a Sunday afternoon, a British pub style roast dinner, huh. you can have it and it's awesome. It's excellent. Or if you want really good Italian, there's some Italian guy that's opened up a restaurant or there's a French restaurant. Very close to me is the best French bakery I've seen outside of Paris. So <laughs> you like that. Yeah. Thing. So yeah, yeah. All within this, all within this very small okay. area. Cost of a meal. What, what would that run? And, and, you know, I mean, doesn't have to be high end, but let's say, let's say Gillen doesn't like to cook all the time, right? She would love to eat out five days a week. What do you think? I went out, I went out to grab some street food last night. Um, there's a woman named Layla, a um, Thai Muslim woman who has a stall just below my apartment. I'm not entirely sure what what to call her cuisine, but it seems almost a, a tad Middle Eastern, mm -hmm. kind of mixed with a bit of Thai. There's a, there's a Muslim neighborhood close by here. So I got some kind of look like kind of saffron rice and uh, chicken and this beautiful clear soup with cilantro. That was about $2.50. Wow. wow. <laughs> oh my God. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, we've heard the street food is amazing. Do you find that? <laughs> Ooh. Definitely. So you can could go two steps further and find some pad thai or an omelet, Thai omelet, noodles, of course. Yeah, it's it's all it for me. It's just I just go in the street and kind of look around and okay, what do I want today? Mm -hmm. I can smell it. I start smelling it about five <laughs> wow. o'clock coming, wow. coming up from the street. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, skewers with chicken or skewers oh, with beef or nice. um, yeah. 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 Language. Yeah. that yeah. kind of yeah. you know peanut dipping sauce mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Back to the markets, we've heard that there are fabulous markets there and not just uh, morning markets, there are evening markets and there are flea markets that sell not just food, but but sort of everything. Is that you find that the case? Yeah, I mean, some of these, some of them are fairly touristy. The night markets ah. tend to be touristy. They're selling ah. phone covers and, you know, kind of manufactured <laughs> stuff from China. You know, you it's not a place I'd, I'd go more than once or unless I had a visitor. The atmosphere is cool usually, and there's music, musicians, and but not a place I would normally go. Some of the food markets are definitely open all day. The you know they have what, what they call wet markets, which is you know meat and fish and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Some markets have all of it. Some of them are just little neighborhood markets that open. Like there's one near here that opens on Tuesday and Thursday from five to eight or something, mm -hmm. and that will be. A lot of people with prepared cooked foods, or they might be barbecuing or uh, roasting corn on the cob or something. Yeah, so there's you you, you can't miss everywhere you go. There's a market. Mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm, a, mm -hmm. one kind of market. There's a Sunday walking street and a Saturday walking street where the street closes oh. here in Chiang Mai, and it's just mm -hmm. vendors that set up more high end than the night market because they have 
handmade handicrafts or they have beautiful musicians and really good prepared street food and kind of, you know a, just a different experience a bit more high end but lovely yeah oh wow and you know i i don't mean to drag us back to food but the good thing also is you have the best of both worlds i mean you can fill your fridge and you can eat out at the spur of the moment or take out or whatever yeah. because you know what we find is we'll go and pick up groceries for a week i'd say I don't want to say a third, but maybe a fifth gets tossed, which is horrible for the, horrible, for the planet. Yeah. I know, I know. For the planet, right? And during COVID, the New York City Sanitation Department has ceased composting, you know, pick up for right. many, right, right, many, right. many areas. So uh, we were doing that feverishly up until then, all of a sudden, boom, stop. Then we're home more. Mm. So we're cooking more, mm. and, but we're also mm. growing out. So anyway, aside from the waste, I think what's great about being able to just pick up a street food meal or just a quick meal like that is you're not wasting. You're not wasting much. You're going to eat what you get. Yeah. I think that that's, I think there's a, probably a number of reasons why Thai people eat that way. Well, you know, it's you just fresh. go out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's fresh. You watch somebody cook it, generally speaking, and you don't need to take it home. The more it's more fun actually yeah. just to yeah. sit out on a, on a yeah. plastic stool in the yes. street. What I miss when I go to Western countries now is the street life. You know, and I was in New York this summer. I went uh, to get a vaccination before I went to Sudan. And you know, street life is different. It's so different. Oh, you yeah. go to Vietnam or Cambodia or uh, Thailand. And when it starts to get, when it starts to cool off at the end of the day and it starts to get dark, people just come out into the streets and they, wow. they sit around, you know, they sit around on whatever, whether it's a tree stump or a plastic stool, they eat out, families come out and sit. So it's very vibrant. It's really alive. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. that. I love mm-hmm. that. Can we move to um, healthcare? So when do you move into Chiang Mai? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm well, sensing some new neighbors here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know, I know. Some of these questions I'm asking, obviously, are not part of our uh, little set of questions because I am, you can tell, I am personally very <laughs> invested in this conversation. You know, I, I think out of the three areas, you know, uh, Phuket, and Bangkok and Chiang Mai, I, I have found so far the one I'm drawn to the most uh, this past week is is Chiang Mai because it's it's a little different, you know. Yeah, we, that's, that's we, your place, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think because yeah. the arts, the arts and crafts, um, the silver, mm-hmm. just those, you know, I, I read that ceramics, uh, which is another thing that I'm really interested in. That's big. And I love quick meals. <laughs> I don't want to keep saying the word street food, but, yeah, but yeah, I yeah. love, you but know. Street and, food is different than you <laughs> Right. It's usually better in these countries. And you know so. what? It is so much more fun when you're sitting outside and just watching someone cook and engage in the conversation. And, mm-hmm. and you're, it's a very social, wonderful activity. It is. My it only is. issue, my only issue might be, I love cappuccinos and lattes. <laughs> and, oh, and, and, and oh desserts. my dear, my dear. You have no idea. No, no, no. I, cafe, I know it's there. Oh, I don't know about the desserts. The cafe culture. Oh, yeah. The cafe culture in Chiang Mai is Parisian. Um, oh, wow. I mean that. Sincerely. Really? Yeah. Wow. There's there a, you go. There is a, <laughs> there <done>. is a, <laughs> there's a coffee shop on every two feet. They pride themselves in coffee. Uh, you will find your latte and cappuccino. I don't actually drink coffee, but I smell it everywhere. Hanging out in cafes is a big deal here in Chiang Mai. Oh, so they don't throw you out. You can go in with a laptop, sit there for no, hours. No, no. People just, uh, that's, people do that. Um, desserts, Thai desserts, wonderful. Anything you want in Western desserts is here that my, my French bakery has anything. Okay. French bakery. Well, that, see, yeah, well, that's where I would go because, uh, you know, the Chinese, I, I could speak on behalf of the Chinese and my sisters will attest to this. They're not the best um, dessert people. No. Okay. No. no. <laughs> Chinese, uh, Chinese. If you desserts, want just like dry dough. Uh, no, Chinese desserts. No, definitely not. But you know what? You don't. When you're living here, you don't have to always eat Thai food. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because you have, you can mix it up. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I want chocolate lava cake, mm. um, or a really good <laughs> croissant, or a yeah. wonderful baguette. And I've got this. Uh, everybody, the way people operate on social media here, on social communication media here, is amazing. There's a an app called Line, L I N E, which I don't know if you have WhatsApp, but it's yeah, similar sure, sure. to oh, okay. similar to WhatsApp. But okay. they don't use WhatsApp here so much. The oh. baker, I send him a message the day before saying I want baguette and piece of what? chocolate lava cake. What? Yeah, I just I just sent him a message. Oh my goodness! And so, All right, Deborah, I'm going to be there <laughs> soon. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what? My dentist, my hair cutter, everybody that I deal with, the guy who does my visa, everybody, I send them messages online. Oh, this, listen to this, listen to this. The internet people. I just send them a message online and a human being immediately gets back to me with a personal message to say, what's your problem? Or we fixed your problem or people. I've had people in Bangkok who are repairing a piece of video equipment for me. Boom, wow. there's so-and-so on the line app. And okay. I came in, I came in, when I came in from Sudan, I had to do two weeks quarantine in a hotel in Bangkok. There was a nurse at the hospital, the people who did my food, the people at the front desk, everybody, the transportation from the airport to the hotel was a different, was online on one account. And they would have nurse, driver, wow. restaurant. <clears throat> so, you know, to the restaurant in the morning, I want this, 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 and this for lunch or breakfast. Wow. Get right back, say, yeah, we can do that. Uh, we are so the behind the day, times The here. nurse every day was <laughs> checking in. What's your temperature? Oh my God. We are so behind the times and I, we're in New yeah. York City. I know, I know WhatsApp <laughs> or line makes everything easier for communications, but how is your, um, your tie? Do you speak? Do you speak well at all? You know, I've been back and forth here to between Thailand and other countries, mm -hmm. and I've never spent the focused time to yeah. try and learn, but I'm trying. I'll put it that way. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, people are really patient and really nice. I'm listening to Duolingo and trying some apps, and then I'm trying a little bit each time to try and say a little bit more. I'm starting to listen better, which I find when you've lived in a country for a while. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. You start to hear you know what I mean? You start mm -hmm, to hear mm -hmm. the sounds um, become more distinct. Yeah. So yeah, it's a goal, but I won't say I'm there by any means. Okay. But yeah. you don't need to. I mean, but well, you have the expat community, but you're also, from what we can glean, that you're immersing in the culture without necessarily speaking it. And and there's a difference to me. There's the immersion, and then there's those that are like just speaking English, but then there's the ones in between. Like we've met a bunch of people, a bunch of our guests, sign language or, you know, yeah, what, lie, whatever, yeah. feet, uh, gestures, and because they want to know their neighbors, right? They want to know the natives. So they kind of go in between. Okay. I, I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 It's um it's a combination of ways to communicate. Everything from using a translate app to eye contact to hand signals to mm -hmm. a few words mm -hmm. here and there. Mm -hmm. It, I think it's willingness and people here are so nice and so willing to do that. Yeah. Do yeah. some of the locals speak uh, English? <laughs> yes, for sure. Uh. Okay. Let's go back. And I think we t we touched upon this healthcare as we move, as we think about retirement in a foreign country. Uh, what comes to mind is and we hear this from some of our guests who say, well, if there's anything serious, I can always go back home and home meaning Europe or the United States. Do you feel ever that there's a lack of health care or what is the health care like in Chiang Mai? Thailand is awesome. It's got Thailand has a well during non pandemic times has a booming medical tourism industry and oh. dental tourism yeah. industry. Okay. Huge. Okay. It's yep. huge. Yep. We've got world class hospitals mm. in, in Thailand. There's a couple of uh, world class hospitals in Chiang Mai. And then there's also the government hospitals for your, you know, normal everyday stuff if you want. Okay. My experience is in in Thailand. I was living in China and I came to Thailand. I needed a foot surgery years ago and I chose Thailand to come to. My insurance wow. would have sent me, my insurance would have sent me anywhere except the US, <clears throat> but I chose Thailand. What I hate to say, great experience, but it really was. The service, the one on one kind of connection that there's always somebody looking out for you. You know, a day for a surgery, I don't have much experience with this, just the one time, but you know, there's tests and there's uh, a lot of waiting and then there's you do this and then you do that and in all cases the same person was attached to me all day hmm. and she came you know she came to take me to the next thing or to take me to whatever whatever was happening next the caring nature of thai people along with the fact that there's a lot of western trained doctors in thailand so they're hmm. trained in the uk or the us or Australia. And the hospital that I go to when I need to go for some minor thing here in Chiang Mai. So you go on their website and if I, I needed to get something done 
as an aftermath to a cataract surgery. And uh, it was a laser thing. I can go on their website and choose the doctor I want Mm -hmm. based on, you know, I can see that he is graduate of Harvard Medical School or whatever Mm -hmm. he is. Mm -hmm. And then I can choose, I can choose him. This service is amazing. And I say service because it's like a business. Mm -hmm. It's not Canada is, they have, they, it's wonderful. Don't get me wrong. We've got universal Mm -hmm. medical Mm -hmm. care. Yeah. which is something you don't have in the United mm-hmm. States. I know. Yeah. Still, <laughs> Our Canadian you kind of get, <laughs> yeah. yeah, mm-hmm. get thrown in the door there and you kind of mm-hmm. have to work your way through whatever. This is a very, this feels like, um, it just feels very, very different. So you need to have insurance. I'm really surprised when you say someone would go back home for the big things. I'd be the opposite. I'd be, you know, there are people coming from the United States to Thailand, India, Malaysia, mm-hmm. places that have this, these uh, Hong Kong that have, uh, that are known as medical tourism places when it's not pandemic. The medical insurance costs will depend on your age, any conditions that you have, how much of a uh, deductible you're willing to absorb. So I've settled, I've just come out of still being insured by uh, workplaces. I've just been doing the research now. I've got an agent in Bangkok, uh, an Australian guy that I talked to. I've chosen one with reasonably high deductible because I don't have any major health problems. But if I ever got I had a stroke mm-hmm. or yeah, yeah. cancer or mm-hmm, in, mm-hmm, a, mm-hmm. in an accident or something, right, right, then I'm covered for you know, so I'm going to be paying about, I think for US dollars, it was about $130 a month. Oh, it's oh, not bad. Not bad at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. And they'll Good. usually cover you for anywhere except the United States. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Got gotcha. International health insurance. Yeah. <laughs> as long mm-hmm. as you're, as long as you're living for a certain amount of time, and in, in this case, in Thailand. But there are other. I've had other ones when I was uh, like I'm 65 now, so that kind of changes the dynamic a bit in terms of, and I have to get a bunch of tests cleared and whatever before uh, the insurance. But prior to 65, a lot of people go with an American company called Cigna and they Mm -hmm. pay, I don't know, maybe 250 US dollars a month or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Still, still well below. And you say you have to get health insurance. What do you mean by that? You have to, you're required by the government? No, actually I shouldn't shouldn't have said it that way. If you're coming in, say from the United States and you're wanting to get a visa, to a, like a, a retirement visa in Thailand, you'd have to have you'd have to have insurance of so much, right? Okay. If you came in to Thailand as a tourist and then changed into a retirement visa, you don't. So ah. I do not need have. Nobody's making me have insurance. Okay. When I say you have to have insurance, it's just because it's wise. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Of course. You have to okay. get your own. You have to buy your own insurance. Yeah. And you know the costs of medical stuff are so low that I know some people here that are say over seventy, where it's uh, more expensive and more challenging to get to get insurance. Who just save up a certain amount every year and they're they're doing that. Oh, I they personally pay, they pay out of pocket. About that. They pay yeah. out of pocket. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because I mean the, the costs are the costs are low. All right. Can we talk, go on to a question that a number of guests have asked us, and that is as a woman, as a single woman, do you feel safe where you are? Is it a good place for a single women to live? We've had a number of questions yeah, at that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that's critical. You know, look at uh, l- let's look at Mexico now. My what I my original kind of dream. No chance when I go to Mexico now. This place is so wonderful in terms of safety. Even in Bangkok, I've never felt I could go walk around at night. I mean, I'm not out at dodgy places mm-hmm. at three o'clock mm-hmm. in the morning. It's not my lifestyle. Mm-hmm. But Chiang Mai, I can go anywhere. Never have I ever felt for one wow. minute not to feel safe. No. Okay. No, it's just, I highly recommend it for that reason for single women. What <laughs> are the considerations that in your mind that single women should look for if they look to retire abroad? Safety for sure. Community for another. I mean, I had lived abroad quite a lot before I came here. I was pretty resilient and adaptable. And I think that first need to look within yourself. You need to, I guess, two ways of looking at it. What's in you that's going to work in this situation and what's in that place that's going to work mm-hmm. in that situation. Okay. Mm-hmm. And those, you're not going to come to any place and have it work for you. Have all those tick, all those boxes. If you're not in the mindset that you're ready for that. Mm-hmm. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Oh, yeah. So absolutely. <clears throat> some people want to have a big expat community to reach out to. And that's not important to me, but it is to some people. There's a, there's a, I think a relative feeling of security and safety and being around other expats. But 
that is, you, you, you might want to look, if that's important to you, look for places that have that. Go, uh, Facebook pages are the best. So you can go Chiang Mai Women's Group. You'll find, or Chiang Mai Expat Women's Group. So Deborah, we, we've covered a lot. We're so grateful that you mentioned Facebook Women's Group because I think that'll help a lot of people or that'll be very good information to begin with than to go from there just as one source one one resource, I should say. But I want to go back to how far are you or close to the airport? Yeah, that's that's a good a good question as well. One of the draws of Chiang Mai is an international air. It has an international airport. Great. You can fly from here. Not not just you know if you want to go overseas, truly overseas, as in Europe or North America, you'll go through Bangkok, which airport is fifteen minutes away from where I live. Oh. Wow. Um, Great. Yeah. So I can get from here to the airport in 15 minutes. I can be down in the Southern beaches in an hour. Wow. I can be in Bangkok, you know, in less than an hour. In normal times to go to Hanoi or Singapore or any place I want to go uh, outside of, you know, and, and short regional flights to Laos or Cambodia, or it's, it's a great spot for lots of easy access to international travel. Okay. And I heard these right. short flights uh, to say the beaches in in southern Thailand. They're very inexpensive. Is that right? They are. You can go forty dollars to from here to Phuket or one way, but really, really inexpensive. And and you get down there, and there's there's easy easy and cheap accommodations as well. So there is one thing I should tell you about Chiang Mai that most people should know before they locate here. Is there is a time around. February, March, when there is a uh, burning of rice fields and I think it's sugar cane. Yes, I read about of, this. I read about it. Yeah, yeah, outside oh. of the city. Uh -huh. So it's become it becomes a, a thing that you know you know before you come here, you do something about it. I mean, there are people that live here all year long, of mm -hmm. course. A lot of people will tend to choose that time to go somewhere else because well, tell, tell us uh, tell us what that is. I we heard you mention the the title, but what exactly happens and for how long? And you know what? It depends on who you talk to. There are people who say it's happening now, and you know what? It, it isn't. There's, you know, it, <laughs> I can see to the mountains. It's clear. But there, are, it, it depends on who you talk to. I've actually never been in Chiang Mai in February. Ah. It's the only month that I've never been here before, mm -hmm. and this will be the first year that I've ever been in Chiang Mai in February. I've either been working abroad. Or last year, I went down to Phuket for two months. February and March, I stayed south just because it was the first time since the pandemic that we were able to do that. And it was nice to just have a change of scenery. So I see it as, I won't say I've really had the experience because I largely haven't been here. My mindset has always been, that's a good time to go to Bali or go to, <laughs> you know, somewhere in Vietnam. Or if you think of, of the places normally that you can go that are so inexpensive to get there, so inexpensive to get like an Airbnb, which you can get for $20 a night in many of these places. Wow. If you're retired and you've got the time or you're working online or whatever your lifestyle is, there's a chance to do that. But it's real. Some people, it bothers some people quite a lot. Other people say they barely noticed it. Yeah. So, so let me just um, explain a little bit for our audience. And so um, one of the sites explains, in the dry season, the farmers in northern Thailand burn their fields to prepare their land for the following year and also to get rid of bio waste like corn that cannot be sold in the market. It's an annual event and it's quite an event. If you if you just Google, you'll see all these photos. It can be it can be a little densely fogged with, yeah. with you know, the burning of the rice fields, which I never knew about. So this goes on for, I guess, like you said, in the February period. It's a Four weeks. Sorry, March, I think. I think is the mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Like I okay. say, I've never been here through the whole period, but mm -hmm. that's what. Very interesting. I generally hear February, March as being the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. No, good to know. And anything that we may have left out? No, I think the visas. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So if you are over 50, you can get a retirement visa for okay. Thailand. A couple way, um, along with being over 50, you need to keep. 800,000 baht in Thai bank account mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. for a particular period of time and half of that in all year. Okay. Or you can have that amount in income coming into a bank account in Thailand every month. So you can do, you can have a lump sum 
in Thailand, or you can have partly a lump sum and partly a monthly income, or you can just have a monthly income. So 800,000 Thai baht, for example, today is a little over $24,000, US dollars, I should say. Okay, Okay, got it. So that's not very hard. So you can come into Thailand on a, like I did, on a tourist visa. Mm -hmm. Up to 90 days. As an American, you could get, I think, 90 days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you can change from tourism visa to a retirement visa Mm -hmm. through a process here. Or you can apply through a Thai visa in your home country. Got it. And come come in that way. But for people, I really recommend that, particularly if you're not already familiar with Thailand, that you come in on a tourist visa and just see what whether this is for you or not. Even if you want to stay longer, you can leave the country and come back in, go to Vietnam or something, and, and you know, and come back into the country. It, visas are really, I think, quite simple here. I use a agent, another British guy that I know here, and they take care of uh, my visa for me. Mm-hmm. So it's renewed annually. Okay. Got it. Yeah. And I, and I was reading this other blog, Digital Nomads and so forth. And this, this guy, is, mm-hmm. he's young and he's like, well, I know that I can live in Thailand compared to other places for a very reasonable amount. This includes anything from renting a home with the insurance uh, and all those places. And I, and I just want to quote, um, he says, any way you slice the budget, though, it's more affordable to live in Thailand. I paid rent from Barcelona to Oaxaca to Orlando to L.A. And my Thai living costs averaged a third of my previous U.S. living expenses and about half of my current expenses in Spain. So, I mean, that kind of ties that whole, you know, summary together that it's not only a beautiful place, but it's, it really is affordable. It and, is affordable. And I mean, no need a car. I don't you know. pay, mm-hmm. Sorry. I don't pay rent, which is, um, right, right, right. Thing. but even if you were, even if you were paying rent without rent for me, a thousand dollars a month is quite a lot. And probably most of that is groceries. Say wine is expensive, but I buy it. Mm-hmm. Now that's me buying <laughs> what I want. I'm not really worried about it easily live on a thousand dollars a month here if you add on rent that's and that that thousand dollars a month includes my visa costs my condo fees electricity internet food all of that oh um, okay and okay again i'm not i'm not paying rent so yeah, 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 yeah what yeah. are your condo fees if i may ask or what's just, the average i was just thinking that yeah my condo fees annually are about u.s dollars about 280 dollars a year <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, annually. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. What does that include for you? I mean, you have someone in the building, obviously the, the grounds keeper, so to speak, or if anything goes wrong, right? The typical. Yeah. It's, yeah. We have a, a guard house when you drive onto the property. Oh, wow. We have, we have guards within the downstairs at the reception, uh, reception staff, pool, pool maintenance, all that, cleaning of the building. It's, it's impeccably clean pool area is always well maintained. We have a a large garden property by the river. That's all maintained by gardeners that live on the property. Yeah. And is there a gym? I'm just curious. I think she said. My family does not have a gym. Ah. There there was one apparently here at one time, but there isn't, uh, there isn't now. You know, it's funny. But a lot of newer buildings will have a gym. It's funny when we were talking about um, maintenance and building fees, one of our dear friends who lives on the 33rd floor of of a high rise in in Brooklyn. Oh yeah. I mean, he has an amazing view, but he just told us 2 days ago that the elevator was down. And I thought, "Oh man, if I had a bag <laughs> of groceries or even if I had nothing, could you imagine having to walk up 33 flights? Cuz you had mentioned 13. I'm like, "Oh, 13 is bad enough for me, but but I would just hang out until the until the, the repairs yeah, are yeah, made." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. We've there got go, four Tim. elevators in this building. Yeah, yeah. It's never. I've never had a problem okay. with that. No, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any anything else? Oh, oh. In terms of, um, I guess, entertainment, social activities. Are there like university offerings? You know, things where you can learn to do things, activities. I guess I should say hiking. We talked about those types of things, and yeah, d- a little definitely, bit. definitely. And you can find, you know, there's a walking hiking group here. It's not expat. It's just mixed nice. people, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Thai mm-hmm. people, mm-hmm. expat people, whoever. And Doisa Tap is a famous mountain here. So they do hikes up there and they post uh, when they have 
their height. There is a university, lots of things are posted. There's a Chiang Mai happenings type of, uh, I'm not even sure what it's called, but what's happening in Chiang Mai, I think. And it, uh, lots of stuff is posted on there, whether it's an arts event or doors, hiking. I saw something yesterday for kayaking, just a group of people from the university mm-hmm. who gather at a certain temple to go kayaking on the river. Yeah, you can. It's once you get into the groove of it, you can find uh, this city is very cultured and it's very much a university city. So there's always there's always something going on. And now things are starting to post post ish pandemic. Mm-hmm. Things are starting to pick up again, and I'm starting to see more and more more and more offerings. So, yeah, there's lots so, of, lots to do. Okay, so Deborah, you have so much information, and if people are further interested or they'd like to learn more, where can we find you? So I have a YouTube channel called Mobile Dispatches. Mm -hmm. And on that channel, I talk about some of the things we've talked about here. And I've interviewed people to get the ins and outs on how to do everything. So you can find me on there. That's probably the best place. And they can ask questions or contact me through through that channel. And then what's your Twitter handle? Um, At Mojo Dispatches. Any any last words or? uh, For advice? We want to thank you. This has been wonderful. Yeah, you were great. Good, good. Yeah. I sound like a bit of a Pollyanna, I think, but you know what? <clears throat> this place really is wonderful, except for the smoke season. Honestly, there just aren't <laughs> any downsides to it. There aren't yeah. any downsides. It's just, it's a lovely, lovely way to live. And it's a, it feels just like um, a soft landing. I, that's how I would describe it. Oh, wow. Every day is a bit magical. You don't just walk out. You just, you don't know what you're going to see every day. Mm-hmm. Um, just the sights and sounds and smells and yeah, it's a lovely lifestyle, and I definitely recommend it for single women. Great, great. great. Well, on that note, yes. thank you. Great chatting with thank you guys. You. So yeah, nice thank to you meet so much. you. Yeah, and we'll stay in touch. Okay, yeah, take care. Sure. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you know someone who's relocated for retirement and wishes to share their story with us, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Our email address is gg at retirethere.com. Our website is retirethere.com. And you may follow us on Twitter at retirethere underscore. Now, if you've liked our show, please subscribe and rate it in Apple Podcasts. In the meantime, be well. Be well.